Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about stepper motor selection for your application. I have getting more and more questions every day dealing with stepper motors, the size of stepper motors, uh, especially when it comes to retrofits or potential clients feeling that right now they've done enough research that they understand what motor they need for their application. What typically happens is they'll send me what they want to go with, we'll discuss things, and I usually end up telling them they don't require what they think they need, and we end up saving them a bunch of money. Because once you step up to this monster type NEMA 34, you're really looking at a whole different air avenue as far as what drivers will support this monster. So what I've got here as a visual representation is the largest motor I carry and the smallest motor I carry. We've got a NEMA 34 1700 ounce inch motor rated at 5 amp and we have a 300 ounce motor rated at 3.5 amp. Of course the 300 ounce is a NEMA 23. It's designed around the G540 platform. It utilizes a 6.35 mil shaft. This monster utilizes a 14 mil shaft. Okay. Um, to give you guys a direct representation, when we talk about ounce inches, it's, it's discussed everywhere. Everybody typically uses that. Um, there's other measurements that are out there, but overall, ounce inch rating is more seen online than virtually every other measurement. Um, what I wanted to discuss is we're going to translate what that actually means to give you guys a good representation that when you're looking at motor selection, you really understand the gravity of what kind of torque we're talking about. This 1700 ounce inch motor means that basically this from the center point of this shaft and when you come out one inch, this motor within that one inch radius is producing 1700 ounces of torque. Now, if you go two inches from the center of this shaft, it would be producing half of that, okay? So think in terms of what you're using on your motor. Most guys that are using motors like this uh, are typically using a ball screw type setup because motors like this are really generally designed around using a mill. That being said, a ball screw setup is going to be most typical, sometimes belt drive, but overall it's usually uh, ball screw driven. You can see that a ball screw is going to be around the same diameter, maybe slightly bigger, but overall you're going to be easily getting that 1700 ounces of torque available. Okay. Now, what to keep in mind is, if you go, let's say, instead of a full inch away from the center point of the shaft, and you go, let's say, half of that, and we say, let's say, half inch, you actually are doubling the amount of available torque on this motor, okay? And how that works is because of the measurement being taken is based on a one inch radius. If that radius increases, it's going to drop the torque. And when I say the radius increases, it means past the ounce inch level ounce inch therefore you understand how that translates in going from a radius position we increase the radius position we decrease the amount of torque available for whatever component we're spinning we decrease the radius position based on the initial measurement and you're increasing the amount of torque available okay to give you guys a direct representation to understand just how much power one of these motors has you're looking at 106.25 inch pounds of torque. Once again, that's pounds of torque. That is massive, guys. That is a lot of torque. That means within a one inch radius, you're looking at over 100 pounds of actual torque available. Okay? So when guys call me or they message me and say, hey, I, I want to go with NEMA 34s, what are you running? Well, I'm running a 4x8 chassis. Now, now that you know what I just said, think in terms of how easy it is to determine, is that really the best application for this type of motor? I think you pretty much see where I'm going. These type of motors are best used, once again, on mills that are dealing with heavy type machining applications. If you're dealing with a lot of metal, a lot of steel, this is a motor that's gonna be your best friend. Okay, super rigid. To give you an idea and the gravity of just how big this monster is, this is a 10.4 pound motor, okay? This is no joke. I mean, it is definitely, it's like a paperweight. I mean, there's no other way to explain it. It's massive. Our NEMA 23 300 ounce is only weighing in at 2.4 pounds. So you could see the differential. Once again, the, the imaging is really why I wanted you guys to see this. I mean, we're dealing with the Hulk here and David Banner. So 
again looking at this from this perspective hearing it this perspective tells you a lot now when we look at our 300 ounce motor okay again we're going to convert the 300 ounces to inch pounds you're still looking at 18.75 inch pounds of torque okay most guys will look at that and go well that's that's a pretty decent amount of torque and it really is i mean it's is it optimal for dealing with metals uh, I wouldn't say it's optimal. It's probably borderline on optimal. And here's the caveat to when we're selecting torque ratings, okay? If you're looking at a large motor like this, and we're looking at 1,700 ounces, and we're dealing with a larger scale mill, um, if you're looking at the torque rating, I always recommend for whatever motor size you select, I've said this in previous videos, going up at least 20%. And that 20% buffer is for when you actually accelerate the motor. Steppers decrease torque the faster they go. In order to give you a rapid that you'll have an excess of speed available should you require it, the best way to do that is just increase the torque rating on your motor. This way, when you accelerate the motor, you'll never notice a, t a torque actual reduction. It's something to think about, okay? When you look at these motors, and we look at, you know, again, 106.25 inch pounds of torque here, and we're looking at 18.75 inch pounds of torque here. That's a huge disparity. My 600 ounce motor, and the only reason I don't have it pictured is right now I'm waiting for an order to come in, believe it or not, um, is 37.5 inch pounds of torque. That's massive, guys. I mean, that's why I designed those motors. I went from a 3 to a 600 to a 1700 because basically, for all general applications, these motors, one of them will fit your application. I mean, that's without a doubt. And if you think in terms, and I always hear this, you know, my gantry weighs this, my table weighs this. Again, what your table weighs really isn't the main perspective that we're looking at as far as a variable for selecting a motor. And the reason I say that is very seldom times are you even moving maybe more than a third of the actual gantry weight or the axis weight. If we're utilizing a ball screw, of course the ball screw is going to be requiring a lot different leverage in order to move that axis. And it's usually accompanied by bearing blocks and everything else that's mechanically hooked up to give these motors that edge so to speak in where you require much less torque than typically of what you might think again based on your experience if you've already built a machine like a Shapiko or you know all the other ones that are out there the maker bees and I mean there's tons of machines hitting the market um, when you look at these type of motors in that perspective it really gives you guys an eye-opening experience as far as what is capable I mean, with a motor that's doing basically 19 inch pounds of torque, you can still machine quite a bit of substrates. When you're getting into metals, a 600 ounce motor is going to be pretty much your best friend. I mean, uh, I, I don't know what else to say with that. If you guys have mills, I have guys doing engine blocks with these. And I mean automotive engine blocks. So, and easily. <laughs> Let, let's be real. I mean, again, depending on your end mill, depending on the spindle you're using, uh, all those correlate your feed rates. I cannot tell you guys enough how all the variables really dictate what size motor you need. But with this video, I think once again, I'm really covering a couple points that I've never seen covered in a way in other videos where they talk about, you know, ounce inch ratings and why you would go with NEMA 34. Yeah, we know it's a beefier motor, um, but the real question is, do you need it? Is it something that you require? Are you going to use this amount of torque on your machine? Um, and again, is your machine sturdy enough to handle this kind of torque? I get that all the time where guys think, you know, they're building a system themselves and they assume that this motor is, you know, perfectly fine for their chassis that they're building at a 6061. It's going to be half inch thick. Guys, this is a big motor and it puts out a lot of torque, enough torque in fact that it will of course hurt you or damage your equipment if you screw up. I mean, I really want everybody to consider that when we're looking at these motors. If I make the recommendation for these, there's a reason. It's because typically I always ask first, what's your application? Once again, it's no different than the 300 ounce. Application will always go first typically table size next because table size I've yet to have a guy say well you know what the motor is just not moving my table I've never ever had that um, whether he's designed it he bought it system it's really a question of 
applicational use, what feed rates he's working with, um, again, what material he's working with. I've never had a client say to me, you know, my table's cutting too slow. I mean, uh, unless they're running, I should say, unless they're running a ridiculously low power supply. Typically, it's not the production output of the machine that suffers. They're looking for more cutting power. And that, again, realms from a lot of different variables. Once again, it's a combination of not just motor selection, but that spindle and that feed rate and that also the end mill. So just keep that in mind. These motors, once again, give you a good perspective and the 600 ounce, even though she's not in this video. You guys now know 106 pounds, 18.75, 600 ounces, 37.5. In, and I'm talking inch pounds, not ounce inches. So once again, just to clarify, that's one inch from the center line of these motors in rotational actual torque. So if we once again go past that one inch mark, we start decreasing in the available torque. If we go lower than that actual inch, inch line from the center line, you're increasing that exponentially. So you now understand how actually steppers are designed when it comes to their measurement characteristics. If you're seeing ounce inch measurement, now you know what you're looking at. You know, a lot of guys ask me that all the time. What does that actually mean? And it's, it is confusing. I mean, it was confusing for me for a while. And as you work with it more and more, you really become more in depth with what you're looking at. And I think the more you're around systems like this that utilize these type of motors, you realize just how powerful they really are and what they're capable of. You know, I'm never, I'm never shocked at what you can do with a 300 ounce. I'm never shocked at the 600 ounce. I myself have milled many parts that were steel with 600 ounce motors. It's really a question of the combination of the tools. But again, don't pay more than you have have to yes increase the motor size and when I say the size I mean the torque by actually a buffer of a minimum of 20% that 20% buffer is so to speak the actual sweet spot so that when you guys do accelerate for your rapids you don't have to worry about so much of a torque reduction you can go as high as 30% but I really recommend staying under that 50% mark because then you're just paying for stuff you're never gonna see I mean, it, get, it comes to a point where you get to that point of no return, so to speak, and your payoff is not really worth the bang for the buck. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you message me, if you do have questions, please ask. Don't make an assessment based on buying a large motor that you may not need because you know what you end up doing? Pissing money away, and there's no reason to do that. Take your time, and hopefully, um, again, if you if you do that and you figure out exactly what chassis you're working with, selecting a motor will basically fall in. A lot of the chassis that are available, you know already on the market that are made for one of these sizes. Uh, if you're doing a full-scale retrofit, again, bridge ports, whatnot, you may even be up to a NEMA 42 standard. I can tell you right now that with technology the way it's actually expanded, you typically will not need a NEMA 42 other than the fact that's what's plug and play with the machine. A NEMA 34 can easily put out most of the torque that's required for one of those systems. I've done it many times. So again, one thing you can do to save some money, and again, this is just a hint, if you guys have access to a machine that can make your mounts as an adapter plate, you're golden. Okay, a lot of companies won't do it because we know why, because it's easier to make money by charging you proprietary to buy that NEMA 42. Okay, so keep that in mind. Retrofits, there's always going to be questions on. If you have questions, message me. But now I think I've made it pretty clear, and I think it gives you guys some tools to work with and think about. Um, and especially think about your own machine. If you have a machine already running, it really shows you what you're working with, especially as you look at what's connected. If you're dealing with ball screws, you already know how much torque is really going to that screw. Um, if you're dealing with sprockets or gear reduction units, again, keep in mind the actual radius you're working with, and I'll give you a, a general perspective of where your torque rating is. So again, I hope this video has been helpful. If you guys do have any questions, I'm sure I've probably uh, maybe even uh, requested more or, or generated more questions than answers, then just message me. I'll do my best to get back with you as soon as possible, and we'll go from there. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody for their patience, all my subscribers. I love you guys. We're growing uh, leaps and bounds, and I want to let everybody know I, I, I truly appreciate it. If you do have any questions, once again, my contact information is always below in the video. You can contact me direct at my email at storm2313 at gmail.com or through my e-dealer direct store on eBay, and we'll get you taken care of. Thank you guys again. Take care.